After you've been using your Anytone radio for a while, you're going to want to update your CPS. Updating your radio CPS is crucial to having a functional radio, but sometimes the process can feel tricky. Fortunately, updating your CPS is a skill you can easily master with practice. By understanding a few basic processes and concepts, you can learn how to install the CPS on your Windows computer without stressing. Hi, I'm Cody, W3AMG with BridgeCom Systems. Today, I'll be guiding you through the CPS settings on your Anytone radios and also teach you some easy to learn tips so you can navigate your radio with confidence. So first, we're going to go into the computer here, uh, open up a web browser and go to bridgecomsystems.com. I have a shortcut for it here. But... And then click on the support section. From here, you want to scroll down and find the software for your radio. Uh, so in this case, we're working with an Anytone 878 Plus. Uh, so they, they have all the different types of radios here. Uh, so I want to download the CPS firmware and uh, whatever it says there, all of this. So I'm going to click on that and then it'll give us some more options. There we go. Anytone 878 slash 878 Plus CPS firmware and driver downloads. Uh, now this will apply for any of the radios that we sell. Uh, if the software is free for download, it'll be on that page. And then from here, uh, we have the latest version, which is 1.22. Uh, looks like, let's see, please no due to current issues. So they are not recommending us download 1.22 right now because uh, it has some bugs. So we are going to download this one, but typically I would recommend the latest. Um, now it is important to check that your radio uh, what firmware it has. Uh, if you just got it from us, it usually comes with the latest, so you're good to just download the latest CPS. Um, but if it's an older radio, you haven't used it for a while, uh, it, you do want to match up the firmware and the CPS, uh, and we can show you how to check that on the radio. Okay, so to check what firmware you have on the radio, go ahead and turn the radio on, then click Menu. Uh, now we're going to cycle around to Settings. Uh, select that and then go to device info and then from here we can scroll down and look at firmware version so in this case we're looking at 1.19 uh, so this radio is a little bit out of date so if we want to use that latest CPS we would want to go ahead and update the firmware on the radio and there is a link to that firmware update video in the description down below so I'm going to download 1.21 here and just save that to your downloads folder. Actually, we'll do it for desktop for ease of use. There we go, so it's going to come in a zip file. So close out of your web browser here. And we can see the zip file here. So go ahead and right click on it and then click Extract All. There we go, so we can just extract all of them right here. Take it a second. And this is just uncompressing that file. And here we go. So it automatically opened up that folder for us. Uh, so you can, at this point, just get rid of the zip file. We, we are done with it. We don't need it at this point. And then here we go. So they have a, a read first, update instructions. Uh, then here is the CPS, so this is the file we actually want. Now I'll just go over what all the, the other stuff is. This is the firmware. So these are this is the firmware information. If you want to update your radio's firmware, if it's older, um, they have a screens folder. So this comes with all kinds of cool screens you can put on your radio. These are awesome. I, I really like these. Uh, there's a conversion program and programming guides. So we are just going to install the CPS. So open that folder up and double click on the setup. and go ahead and give it permission. Click yes. Choose your language. Click next. Now this is important. Uh, we actually want to make a change here. It will automatically try to install it on the D drive. Uh, you can do this, but it's generally not advised and generally the D drive is just for like recovery. Um, and some computers don't even have it. So what you want to do is install it on the C drive. I'll explain how to do that. Just go up here, click C, 
and click OK. It's that simple. Click Next. And just we can just keep its ordinary name. And then I always like to create a desktop icon. Go ahead and check that. It'll make it much easier to find. Click Next. And everything looks good, so we're going to click Install. There we go. And then finish that. So it's going to launch it for us. Okay, so now I'm going to take you through a few basic functions of the CPS. Uh, so first, you want to make sure your radio is turned on and plugged in. And uh, then there's a few buttons up here. So this one is the COM port button. So when your radio is turned on and plugged in, it will show up here under a COM port, or you may have multiple to select from. Uh, and go ahead and select your radio from there. I don't have my radio plugged in right now, but this is where it would show up. And then what you want to do is read from the radio. So you click this and then read the data from the radio. Uh, now, if you purchased a plug and play package from us, or you have data on your radio currently, what I would recommend doing before you make any changes to it is once you read from the radio, read all of the data, the other data, and the contact list, then go up here to File and do a Save As, and save this somewhere on your computer where you won't lose it. Uh, and, and that way, if, if for some reason you're making changes, as long as you keep this separate and don't use this file, uh, you'll always have that original so you don't mess it up. Uh, but beyond that, uh, so you have your Read From Radio, COM port button. This is how you write to the radio, this button right here. Uh, then you go to Channel. This is where you import, uh, you would add all of your different frequencies. So if you wanted to add a repeater, you put your, you know, receive transmit frequencies. You just double click on these to open them up, by the way. And then uh, finally, once you have all of the information you want to add at th that time, don't forget to create a zone and add it to the zone. You do have to make a zone, otherwise you won't see it on your radio and you'll be pulling your hair out. So uh, make yourself a zone and make sure to add those channels over to your zone and that way you can actually get to them on the radio. If you were looking to update your radio CPS to the latest version, you can go straight to our support page and find your radio CPS. The link is in the description. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Cody at W3AMG with Bridgecom Systems 7.3.